Hi, I'm Ken Pekraski, and I'm a volunteer at the Mawa Museum in Mawa, New Jersey. Um, welcome to the Les Paul 105, a virtual celebration. We've put together a, an exciting lineup of events over the next few days, and I know you're going to enjoy them. Uh, we're going to continue with, um, uh, with Muriel Anderson. And before I go on, I just, for anyone who is in the, um, uh, the Tom Bresch segment, uh, I, I need to apologize in the last five or 10 minutes, uh, we simply lost the signal. Uh, and uh, since Tom did videotape that, uh, we're going to put together the part uh, that got lost. So we're going to be posting that on our Facebook page. You know, there's a learning curve to this. And, um, and I did say at the outset of my remarks that we're new and that, you know, sometimes hiccups happen. Well, the hiccup happened. And that, um, you know, even like when I watch newscast, uh, and I'm sure you have seen this too, in the middle of an interview, uh, a signal gets lost and, and they lose the, the person that they're interviewing. So these things happen. Um, but this uh, concert was originally intended to be an outdoor concert. Uh, we, but because of the, uh, the coronavirus and the social distancing uh, mandates, uh, we were not able to do that, but we still wanted to celebrate less. So we're presenting this concert um, virtually. And of course, there's no substitute for going out to hear the excitement of live music. And we do hope that at some point that's gonna come back real soon. Yeah. Um, Mawa was home to Les for over 60 years. He recorded a Mawa, he invented a Mawa, broadcasted a Mawa, uh, raised a family, and was an integral member of the community and became the pride of Mawa. He influenced countless musicians from a wide range of genres. And you're gonna see those influences in the coming days. Uh, a little bit about the, the museum itself. It's a small yet vibrant place. Uh, not only does it have an extensive Les Paul display, its current exhibits include the Palisades Amusement Park celebrating the 50th anniversary of Ramapo College and the Donald Cooper Model Railroad display, which is very popular with the kids and also popular with the adults as well. The museum is currently closed and if all goes well, we plan to reopen in September. So please check our web pages and our Facebook pages uh, for any updates. Uh, this event was also intended to be a fundraiser for the museum. We're asking for your support. Uh, we have donate buttons on the Mawa Museum uh, Facebook page, the Les Paul and Mawa Facebook page, as well as the home page of the Mawa Museum, which could be found on mawamuseum.org. Now, no about is too small. We really appreciate your generosity. So become a member. Uh, it's $20 for a two-year individual membership, $30 for a two-year family membership, and you could become a member by going online to the museum's webpage. We're 100% volunteer, so be assured that your donation and membership dollars go directly to the exhibits and the programs like this one. And we hope to see you when the museum is open. We're excited to have Muriel Anderson with us tonight. Uh, Muriel, uh, some highlights of Muriel's background. Muriel is the first woman to win the National Fingerstyle World, World Championship. Her CD, Night, Nightlight Daylight, was chosen by Guitar Player Magazine as one of the top CDs of the decade. Muriel's Heartstrings recording accompanied the astronauts on the space shuttle Discovery. In addition to Les Paul, Muriel has recorded or performed with Chet Atkins, Victor Wooten, Tommy Emanuel, and the Nashville Chamber Orchestra. Les once said of Muriel, just one hell of a great player, a great personality, and what I like is the touch that Muriel has on the guitar, the way she plays it, like we all wish to play. In addition to being a composer, performer, and an educator, Mira is a chef. Her latest release, Acoustic Chef, is a CD of music around the world with a cookbook of recipes and stories that go with each tune. Muriel is the host of the renowned All-Star Guitar Night. 
different squares. And, I was just and founder of Music for Life, uh, Music for Life Alliance charity, which facilitates the efforts of individuals and organizations making music learning accessible to young people who may not otherwise be, uh, be able to experience the educational, psychological, and social benefits of making music. Muriel's teaching can be found on the True Fire channel, which is a great resource for online guitar instruction. It is my pleasure to introduce Muriel Anderson. Okay. <laughs> All right, you see me? We do now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to uh, just tell you a little bit about how I met Les and how he became such an important part of uh, really my life and uh, just an incredible man to, uh, to know. I was playing on WGN radio and this is the Steve and Johnny show. And they told me there's a caller on line one. It's Les Paul. And, and I thought, well, surely it's not. It's got to be one of my friends, probably Tom Bresh. He does impersonations. It was probably him playing a joke on me. After all, it was about one o'clock in the morning. And he comes on the radio and he says, hey, this is Les Paul. And I'm listening from New Jersey, listening on the radio I built myself. And I said, I like your playing. And if you're ever in New York on a Monday night, come sit in and play with me. And I took him up on it and did a number of times. So I'll start off with a tune that I played that introduced me to Les. And he recorded this using the sound on sound and uh, speeding it up. So it was a wild arrangement, uh, but I just play all the parts uh, at the same time here. And this is my arrangement of NOLA. Thank you. 
Remembering when Les played that. I have a question though. Uh, do I look like I'm left handed or right handed on the, on the video? So I'm just. You look like you're, you're right handed. You're right handed? Okay, so that's good. I'm just, uh, I haven't used this uh, software before. So no, I think you're right. All right, excellent. That means it's, it's doing the right thing. Yes. Okay. You know, Les had a lot of music that he played and a lot of stories too. And I'm remembering that it was actually backstage at the Iridium. He was saying that there was a day that he was playing with Judy Garland and this little man walks up with glasses and said to Les, I've got an invention you might be interested in. It's called audio tape. The Germans were using it during the war and I think it'd be a good thing to put music on. So just imagine, he was there at the very beginning of the recording industry as we know it. So just an uh, incredible uh, piece of history and uh, the way he created history by his innovations as well as his music, you know? And I'll play a tune that, that he liked when I uh, stopped in and visited at the uh, Iridium. And he had a piano player named John Coliani, played uh, just some great piano keyboards. And I remember John would do this kind of chump, chump, chump rhythm. And I tried to capture the feel of that piano rhythm uh, in this arrangement of Close to You.
Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Were you singing along? I think you were just a little bit there. <laughs> oh, you might. Um, it's really an honor to celebrate Les's birthday here, and I thank the Mawa Museum for inviting me, and hope you get lots of support for this. And um, well, one thing, Les and I share a birthday week, and so I remember we'd always wish each other a happy birthday around the same time. And uh, in fact, I'll be doing a birthday concert also if you, uh, on June 17th. Uh, if you want to tune in, I'll invite everyone here to come. And um, it was actually that first song that I played, Nola, that introduced me to another one of my heroes. I was just remembering that. I played it for my mandolin teacher, Jethro Burns, out in Evanston, Illinois. And Jethro said, well, you've got to meet my brother-in-law. Chet Atkins. So uh, Jethro made the introduction, and uh, then Chet also became a, a big, a big influence. And he and Les shared a lot of things in common, uh, especially their sense of humor. Well, you know, Les had this sort of city sense of humor, and Chet had this country sense of humor. And uh, but it was always there, always there. And one time I went over to Chet's office, and he comes down the stairs and he says, "Muriel, I've got." A, a gig for you. I've got a job for you. And, you know, I was pretty ex excited because, you know, I was just a kid. I was just, I did, I was just playing a little hotel gig. I wasn't playing concerts yet, but I thought it had to be big, you know? And so I could barely contain myself. And, and finally, Jess said, well, what it is, is my pet rooster, Hotshot, has come down with a case of the feather mites. And my wife and I, we're getting kind of old. And besides, we're just too big to crawl into that chicken coop. So that afternoon, I actually went over to their home, and with a great deal of coaching, I caught the rooster with uh, his neck with one hand and both legs with the other. Now, you have to do that so that, you know, he doesn't get you with the spurs. And so uh, a little group of people gathered around. Someone was taking pictures. Um, but uh, anyway, Chet's wife, Leona, spread bacon grease around the rooster's neck for the mite dust to adhere to, and they dusted it. And then I caught the hen. And incidentally, the hen's name was also Leona. And uh, afterward, Leona, Chet's wife, invited me to join them for some chicken stew. And that was my big gig for Chet. And I wrote this song for him. And I call it Mr. Chester. Thank you. 
I just couldn't resist here. I went into the claw mm -hmm. by Jerry Reed. I learned this in the kitchen of Chet's office. Mm -hmm. for letting me have a little fun here. Uh, Brush's friend, uh, Buster B. Jones, used to play it like that real fast. And I learned that second part from Jerry Reed backstage at a TV show. He taught it to me while the other acts were up, up playing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like I was, you know, Chauncey Gardner, just happened to be there at these times to meet these wonderful people and get a chance to learn from them. Um, so, uh, you know, what a, a time we have lived in uh, to have known somebody like Les Paul and uh, all the things that he's done. And I think one thing that, uh, that he liked is he liked, you know, people who uh, had their own sound or they were innovators. And in fact, he told me that it was his mother that had really encouraged him to uh, be different and to continually encourage him to innovate. Um, and uh, I'll do one on the harp guitar here. So this is a, a technique that I learned from Chet Atkins. And I took the technique and um, added to it and changed it around. I came out with kind of my own sound on this. And uh, this is what I call a view from space. Thank you. 
such a beautiful sounding instrument. Oh, thank you. Can you um, explain a little bit? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who've never seen a, an instrument like that, a harp guitar. Could you explain? Yes, this, this uh, a harp guitar by definition is a guitar with extra resonating bass strings or extra resonating strings in general. And they can be tuned any way that I want to tune them. I generally tune them going down in a scale and so it um, moves down the scale. And I have uh, this one, uh, this is a carbon fiber harp guitar made by Emerald. And I'm using that here because I'm in Long Island right by the ocean. And those ocean breezes are not so, as quite so good for uh, these delicate wood instruments, but they do great with the carbon fiber and they also do great with the super treble attachment. And this was built by Luke Bruner in Switzerland. And he's now uh, offering them, I think he's starting a batch building this week. He's calling them Muriel trebles, just because I asked for them, <laughs> ask him to design these. And uh, so these can be put on any guitar. So you can turn your guitar into a harp guitar by adding the trebles. And I'll, I'll do a tune that uh, shows, shows off those trebles for you. Uh, and I also teach uh, on the guitar and also uh, harp guitar on my new True Fire channel. So, it, and, and that technique that I used, I, I teach that as well. So if you're interested in, in learning that kind of stuff, uh, it's, it's all linked on that uh, murielanderson.com slash now, uh, the new, uh, uh, new teaching channel. And, that's, and I even give private lessons on that. So it's, uh, it's a cool thing to if you're wanting to get started on, on this instrument or on, on these kind of techniques. So one tune uh, that uh, I think is extra appropriate for, for these days. Uh, this is written by Mark Knopfler and it's called Why Worry?
beautiful sound. That was gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Well, actually, you know, Les didn't really like the harp guitar, you know, and he would, uh, when I play it at his show, he, he would say, oh, you should get a real guitar like a Les Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so there was always some uh, lighthearted uh, kidding and bantering back and forth. Uh, now, having said that, my first harp guitars were hard to amplify, and so they've gotten better over time. So the uh, uh, there's now there's some uh, really beautiful ones, and uh, I'm really really happy with uh, this one and and uh, several other harp guitars too. But everyone needs at least one harp guitar, after all. And uh, you know, I'll do another one with these super trebles. By the way, can you see me fine with this? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. So this kitchen is about the same age as Les, you know? This is where uh, Brian and I spend uh, summer and early fall um, and uh, living very simply. And in fact, most of the cookbook that you had mentioned uh, was really, uh, all those recipes actually were made right here in this kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, I'll show you one. This is the uh, cookbook you were talking about, the Acoustic Chef, and the CD uh, becomes part of the artwork here. And uh, then uh, all, a lot of these pictures were taken right here in this kitchen uh, mm. as, as we made these. And the recipes came from friends all over the world. And then the challenge was really to come up with uh, tunes to go with each recipe and uh, so it was a real challenge to come up with tunes inspired from cultures from all over the world so are the tunes originals or are they from other countries uh most of them are my own compositions uh with uh, uh and i had to really research the uh, the music of, of all the different countries to write something that had it was, sounded really italian something that sounded really finnish uh, and one for the Tuvan lamb dumpling, so uh, this Tuvan Mongolian sound, and I have the Tuvan throat singer singing with me. And the uh, goulash, of course, I had a Hungarian fiddle player from Budapest playing with me on that. And so that was a, just a really great, fun project. Uh, well, you know, actually, before I play some of, some of the tunes from the cookbook, I'm in the, the good tuning to play a, a, another tune that I would love to do for you. Let's see if you remember this one. Sanity. How you try to set them free, the 
They would not listen, they did not know how. Perhaps they'll listen now. Oh, they could not love you. Still your love was true. But when no hope was left inside, on one sorry starry night, you took your life as love as I could do. But I could have told you, Vincent, this world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I remember playing that one at uh, Leslie's show at the Iridium also. And so it was really a great time. He had uh, a lot of wonderful players there. And in fact, I, I wanted to uh, honor him somehow. I've been doing these All Star Guitar Night shows for many years. And uh, I figured we should really honor Les in his lifetime and, and do a special show for him. So when I was backstage, I told him, you know, we're, I'm doing this tribute concert for you. I've rented the Ryman Auditorium, Nashville, the big Grand Ole Opry building. And, and would you come? And he said, oh, yes, but I'll only play if you'll hire my band. And I said, you'll play? <laughs> so I was uh, so excited. Uh, and uh, Tom Bresch was there at that time, and uh, oh, with us right gave, uh, gave Les an award uh, at, the, at that show, and it was just this, this big event, and, uh, and you know, I, I didn't expect that he would play, so of course we, you know, we hired his band, and he played wonderfully, and uh, and also, he emceed it. We emceed it together. I don't know if you need this or not. The testing music. one, two, three. Test, test, test. Yeah. One, two, oh, three. Tom Gresh is here. Tom Gresh has arrived. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Tom. Welcome. Welcome. Am I on well, the air? Yeah, you're on, Tom. Oh, yes. hello, Ken. Hi, Muriel. Hey, Tom. We were just talking about when we uh, did that show at the Ryman Auditorium with Les. Oh, you gave him an award on stage. That yes. was fun. Uh, I had that two-sided guitar out there because I was supposed to play something for Les, and I told the engineers there at the Ryman, turn the thing up. I was on a wireless. They said, we will. I said, turn it up now so I know I have it. We'll do it. We're professionals. I got out there and of course, there was no guitar. <laughs> Les said, play something. And there was no guitar. He said, if you had a Les Paul guitar, that thing would work. Yeah, that's what Les said too. He said, you know, just throw away that harp guitar. Go get a Les Paul. So yeah, he said right. the same thing to you. <laughs> just as I turned that guitar over, I could hear the volume come on. So I played a lick. And I said, do that on your damn Les Paul guitar. <laughs> and he laughed harder than everybody. And I I, I remember earlier, that. Yeah. I told it earlier. Yeah, Justin Witz said that was funny, but I don't usually let people make jokes about Gibson. My opinion, Gibson yeah, is that's a right. joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't I play one of the one of the tunes before we uh, chat some more? Play one of the tunes that uh, I was inspired to learn from that show at uh, the Ryman. I sat next to Pete Huttlinger. It was one of the Ryman shows. And Pete played this incredible tune where he played three parts at the same time. Uh, he played this, this little bass line. So he showed that to me there. And then I added this little bit. And he 
would play the melody. hot shots play all those three and four parts at the same time i could do that if i wanted to i just don't want to <laughs> well you know, sound on sound that's how he did that you know yeah well <laughs> cook something up muriel yeah yeah you're right there up. in the kitchen cook something up yes we'll have it. yeah i've got uh, everything ready to cook for you uh yeah we've uh let me see what do we have here I'll tell you what, Tom, on my birthday, June 17th, right here in this kitchen, I'm going to make some baklava and I'm going to raffle it off to, uh, so after I blow out my candles, I'm going to give away my birthday baklava. All right. So okay. uh, tune in on my, my uh, YouTube site on June 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll send you a, a piece of baklava then. How's that? Well, that's a, that's a deal. Yeah, I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be up there to go to Maine to Lenny's Pub in oh, uh, August. So on my way up there, I'm gonna come early because I want to come out there and, and hang with you guys for a couple of days. Yes, excellent. Well, that would so, be great. You can think about what you're gonna cook up for me then. All right, we're gonna. I'll be in touch. I'll call you on the phone. Yes, we will pull out the stops. We'll make uh, three or four of the recipes from the Acoustic Chef and. Well, if you insist. <laughs> 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 have you tasted her cooking, Ken? I have not. Oh, boy. I all need... those recipes, even if she doesn't have recipes from all over the world, which she does, she's a, she's a little uh, demon when she gets in that kitchen. <laughs> she can whip some stuff up. I bet she could. Well, That's I have some she's... help from Brian with that. Uh, that's why I see Brian is so fat, you know, because that's all I do is eat. <laughs> <laughs> I I ran by Dairy Queen. I'm having a bad hair day today, or I wouldn't have the hat on. Yeah. But I had the sunroof open. I ran over to Dairy Queen to get a chili dog, eat your hearts out. <laughs> that's all I've had. None of that fancy stuff. And you know that baklava has been finally uh, moved over to the uh, Turks. That was a Turkish oh. recipe. Yes. Oh, not Greek. And uh, the Greeks, the they Greeks both claim stole it. it. The Turks say that they stole it, that the Greeks stole it from them, and the Greeks say that the Turks stole it from them. So that uh, it's still yes, a mystery. Everybody's happy when they got that young uh, prime minister or whatever the hell they are. In Greece, Greece and Turkey got together. I was over in Turkey at the time when they got together and made the front page 
them hugging and kissing each other, the Greek and the, because they haven't been together for 70, 80 years or something. Oh. And it was all about that damn baklava. That's right. Well, you Chris know, said, no, those we are the, the things that bring people together. That was our recipe, you know. <laughs> so the new Greek guy said, yeah, but you stole Rocky from us. You call it Uzo. We call it Uzo. You stole it and call it Rocky. So we want that back. So it's okay. You can have it back. So I guess in Turkey, you can get Uzo now and baklava. And in Greece, you can only get the uh, the drink. Oh. Well, Poor Greeks, you know, they don't have anything else to, to land on with food, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that reminds me of a tune that's about bringing two cultures together. Um from uh, distant shores, and this is called Two Shores. And I wrote this uh, a while ago and, and just been thinking about it. So I'll do this, and then I have another story for you, Tom. Another another okay. Les Paul story. I'll sit here and enjoy my cigar. Oh, okay, good. I'll play this, this tune and then we'll share another Les Paul story. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Item here. Have you, Tom, have you seen this book? This is uh, by Steve and Johnny from WGN. They're the ones who introduced me to Les, and they have written a whole book of memoirs of Les called A Little More Less. So wow. really cool stuff there. And uh, I don't know if that story, I know one story that's not in there though. It's about uh, Gibson guitars. You were mentioning Gibson. Um, you know, Les does that show, did that show every Monday night for a long time. And I went walking, decided to go walking with my neighbor and songwriting partner, Billy Ed Wheeler, one day. And I arrive and there's Billy Ed and Chet just getting ready to, to go out for a walk. So they invited me to join them. And Chet told me, you know, Henry, Henry, who owns Gibson Guitars, Henry just gave me a truck. He said, there's no such thing as a free truck. Chet said, and he said, uh, Henry said, go out to the parking lot, and there was a big brand new red pickup truck, Chevy pickup truck. And, Bronco. Oh, Bronco, you're right. Yep. Yes. And uh, uh, so you know a little bit about that one, too. And so uh, Henry said, this <laughs> is for you. And then he said, shortly after that, he said, well, why don't you play at my new club, like, every Monday night? And Chet said, well, you know, that might be a good idea. My friend Les plays in his same, in his own area code, keeps his chops warm, and, and that might be good to, to do that. And so then I mentioned to Chet, you know, well, uh, that's, that's very nice, but uh, Henry's club is really small. And there's another one that's much nicer called Cafe Milano. Well, a little time passes. Next thing I know, Chet had given the truck back and is playing every Monday night at Cafe Milano. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Chet's no idiot. Yeah, he did that for, and a, for a long time. And you couldn't get into Cafe Milano to see Chet anyway. It was so packed. Yeah. So you just right. never got into that little Gibson Cafe that they had on Broad. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, I think that's Chet. why now I'm doing... Uh, I'm doing a Monday night uh, live on my Facebook, and it's really in honor of Les. That's why I chose oh. Monday nights, because that was uh, that was the night that Les did. And so now I'm doing kind of the same thing, the Monday night live on Facebook, uh, as, a, as a nod to, to Les Paul. Yeah, you don't have to stand in line to come see you either. That's right. <laughs> Push a couple buttons on your computer, and there you are. Yeah. Well, uh, we should ask Ken how, how long we should uh, uh, talk, and maybe what we could do when we're, when we're finished is uh, finish off with a clip that we found uh, from the year 2000, March of 2000, uh, playing at Les Paul's show. And so I, I uh, well, want to we have maybe a finish off with that a little bit, but uh, any, any more uh, closing words? Well, one thing, you know, while I have you here live, uh, Tom, yeah. first of all, I want to thank you because you know you you did you did your set on videotape. You probably didn't hear, uh, you didn't see it. So I want to get a give a chance to thank you. It was a we really enjoyed your set. I also need to apologize because we lost the signal during our uh, sixteen tons. Something happened. We had a little bit of a glitch, and we, and we lost that. We're gonna. Since it's on videotape, we're going to put that back together and put that back on our on our, our Facebook page. So I just wanted to apologize, you know, for that. Uh, to Muriel and to Tom, this was a terrific night of music. Uh, this was a great way to start our Les Paul celebration. I thank you so much. And uh, we really look forward to uh, seeing you again at the museum, if not in this environment, this Zoom environment, but certainly in person. Yes. And I have to I say would, I'm a big fan. I'm I a big fan of Tom Brush too. As I would have, oh, never mind. Am I up or not? I don't know. You're, right. I, You're there. I would have loved to have been there because I've never been that, to that part of New Jersey and I was looking so forward, coming up, hanging a couple days with Brian and Muriel, then coming up to you, then going right up to Maine hit a couple of those lobster pounders on the way. 
and uh, seeing you in person. But maybe we can still do that in August. That would be great. Um, we'll see what see things you. are with the New Jersey social distancing stuff, but uh, you have an open invitation. Yeah, well, by August, maybe that'll be over with. I don't know. Who knows? I hope so. So, uh, Muriel, why don't you uh, finish up with a tune, and then we could run the uh, the videotape. Oh, okay. All right. I'll do one. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, Nightlight Daylight CD. This is the one. That, actually, this this was sort of inspired by Les too. This is the one that when you push the moon, it lights up. So it took a long time <laughs> to that. do the fiber optics on that. So I know Les was a real inventor in a lot of ways. So I decided I've got to invent something. So uh, <laughs> that's the uh, the Nightlight Daylight CD and. Uh, this is one of the tunes to wake up to, written by John Philip Sousa, uh -oh. who was my grandfather's boss at one time. Really? And this is called The Liberty Bell. It was also the theme song for Monty Python's Flying Circus. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Send off. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Mawa Museum. Thank you, Ken, for posting for us. Well, thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for a great opening night. It was a wonderful uh, Saturday evening of just tremendous music. Uh, anyone uh, who's out there who wants to know more about Tom and Muriel, uh, Tom has a, a website, brush.com. And uh, Muriel is MurielAnderson.com now. Is that it? Is, am yeah, I right? .com. And, and uh, all my uh, links I've put on uh, a page there. If you go to the now tab, just okay. N-O-W, that's where you'll find it all, everything linked. So everything uh, pertaining to Muriel will be on that website. And the other thing I'd like to, uh, uh, I didn't say is that, because uh, Muriel is uh, involved with the, uh, the uh, musical Alliance size charity. And uh, it's a really good charity, and you can find out more about it on her website. Um, before we roll the, uh, the the videotape, I just want to acknowledge some people who worked in the background uh, that really worked hard on this project. Uh, our technical director, Adam Nemeth. Uh, hey, Adam. 
he did a terrific job. And, you know, go to his website, AmpFX. I'm wearing a shirt, AmpFX.net, um, for all your audio visual design and integration service needs. Uh, we also have a, uh, a, a, our social media director who really put out a yeoman's job and put out the word about this uh, event. Her name is Danny Zanoni, and right. she's a very, in addition to being a social media coordinator, uh, she's a very talented indie pop uh, singer-songwriter, and she has a website, dannyzanoni.com, D-A-N-I-Z-A-N-O-N-I.com. Of course, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Michael Bronstein and Sue Baker at the, uh, the Les Paul Foundation. Uh, they've always been incredibly uh, supportive of everything that we do at the museum. I want to remind the audience out there that uh, right here tomorrow, 4 p.m., we're going to have the alum of the uh, the alums of the uh, Les Paul Trio, including uh, Lou Paulo. Hey, uh, Lou. Say hello to Lou. Hey, Lou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt, Gary yeah. Matarapi and uh, and Vinny Reniolo. And then on June 9th uh, at 7 p.m., we're going to have a conversation with um, uh, Les's son, Gene, Gene Paul. Uh, that's a Zoom event, and um, you need to register for that. So you can go to the Mawa Museum website, and it's a very easy process to register. And Again, I want to thank our guests, Muriel and Tom, and why don't we roll that videotape? Thank you.
like that. Boy, she gets it to you all at once, doesn't she? That's just great. I'm sorry we're loaded down here on, on the thing because we could listen to you all night. We really could. That was really great. Thank you.